Hi, my name is Meg Cohn. I'm a nurse practitioner at the West LA VA. This video introduces West LA's version of the simplified cart for emergency re-sternotomy in the ICU. This simplified setup is good for programs such as ours that only require the procedure to be performed once or twice a year. According to the CALS guidelines, the amount of time it takes to get the chest reopened when a post-cardiac surgery patient arrests is a critical factor in survival. As a result of using this cart, we have decreased the time it takes from when the decision was made to open the chest at the bedside to actually getting the chest open and having a retractor in place from 30 minutes to 7 minutes during mock codes. Before we get started with the procedure, I'd like to introduce you to the small set of instruments that will be used to actually get the chest open. Even though you don't need to know the instrument names uh, and by sight, I'm going to explain what each of them does to uh, help you understand the steps of the procedure. The simplified instrument set in the cart contains the tools essential to get the sternum reopened. The scalpel is needed to reopen the skin. The scissors cuts through the two other layers of suture. The wire cutter is the only instrument that can cut through the wires keeping the sternum closed. The wire twister is used to stabilize and pull out the cut wires. The retractor may then be used to open the sternum, relieving the tamponade or allowing room for internal cardiac massage or defibrillation. Let me show you what's on the cart. First, let me start with what's on top. Here's the large instrument tray. This is the instrument tray that previously was opened for the entire procedure. Uh, with the new way we're doing the procedure, which you will see in a few moments, we're going to save this large instrument tray till the end, and that way it will keep it from getting contaminated. But it is always here, and it always has all the instruments in it. The next items on the top of the cart are the defibrillator paddles. There are two sets of defibrillator paddles. There's the internal defibrillator paddles, which are in this box. In some institutions, they may be in a bag. Here, they happen to be in a box, and they're labeled Zoll defibrillator paddles, the internal. Then there's the external defibrillator paddles, which have a 10-foot cord. This differs from the external defibrillator paddles that are on the regular code card at the VA, and their cord is very short. The 10-foot cord will allow you to run the cord under the sterile drapes when we're opening a chest. We, if you have time, we always prefer that you use the 10-foot cord defibrillator pa uh, pads when we have an open heart emergency. The last item you'll find on top of the cart is the emergency re audit tool slash checklist. This uh, front page gets filled out during the code. It will also help guide you with the procedure steps of the code, because they're all written down here, and then one person fills out what time each step was completed. There are several other pages that were filled out after the code, which we'll use to improve our uh, performance. But this one page is filled out during the code, and it will also prompt you to the sequence of events and how it should go. In the next five minutes, we're going to go through the sequence of events that it takes to open a chest at the bedside in a timely manner. You'll see that it's as easy as one, two, three. Even the most ex inexperienced resident, nurse, or any team member can help assist the surgeon in getting open the chest. The first thing you'll do is open the number one, gown and glove. The uh, surgeon will tell you what size. The surgeon and the assistant will each become sterile as uh, we gown and glove them. The other people in the room just need to wear a mask. Once they are gowned and gloved, you need to set up the sterile field, go to drawer number two, set up the sterile field, open the drawer. Every item in here has a number on it. That's the sequence that you hand them over to the surgeon and his assistant. The first thing you want to hand them is the skin prep kit. Open up the bag, hand it over to him in a sterile manner. He's going to prep the skin. Once the skin is prepped, you want to open number two, the big drape which they will spread out and, ma and make the entire bed a sterile field. He may or may not want some Ioban, but it's here if he needs it. This is a plastic-like cover with, uh, impregnated with antibiotic that will go over the chest. And just open up these towels and throw them on the chest in case he wants them. If he asks for towel clips, those are here too. The third step is handing over everything in this drawer to the surgeon in the sterile field. Obviously, this is the one that you open first. 
The scalper or blade is on top of the small instrument tray. It must be opened separately as it could not be sterilized in the tray. Open that first as per the directions on the box in the drawer. After he has the scalpel, you hand off the inside of the little box to the surgeon. Now the chest can be opened. While they are working on that, open the rest of the items in drawer three, plop them onto the drape without contaminating anything in po if possible. Once everything in drawer three is emptied onto the field, the retractor is in the patient, the chest is open, the immediate um, defibrillation or relieving of tamponade has started. The next thing you want to do is go back to the top of the cart, look at that large instrument tray, and ask them if they're ready for it. The defibrillator pads, remember, are on top of the tray too. Those can be thrown onto the sterile field when he asks for them. Okay, so let's go through a scenario. Uh, you're the bedside nurse. You've uh, taken care of a patient that was a plain cabbage. He's been out of the OR for two hours. Uh, the Medes and the plural also have been putting out uh, over 100 every half hour. You've been giving volume, and uh, every time you give volume, the blood pressure gets better, the cardiac index gets better. However, in the last half hour, your chest tube drainage has increased to about 400 an hour, or 100 every 15 minutes. And uh, you just gave some volume, and his index didn't get any better. His blood pressure is in the low 90s, sometimes dipping into the 80s. Uh, what's your next move? Uh, if you think your next move is to call the surgeon, you're correct. Um, a lot of times you'll be managing a patient with a resident, and um, you're, you'll have a better feel of when it's time to call the surgeon than they will. So you call the surgeon, and he says, I'll be right down. So what are, you, what are you thinking you want to do to prepare for what might eventually happen next? Hopefully you're going to say, hey, I need the cart. I think I may end up opening up the chest at the bedside. And or you might need some OR nurses. Um, here at the VA, the OR nurses it takes at least a half an hour to get back here. We don't have 24-hour nurses. So the nurse at the bedside, it's up to you uh, if you're practicing here. So you're going to run, get the cart, make sure it's at the bedside. The surgeon comes, uh, says we have to open the chest. So you may feel some anxiety. I haven't opened a chest in two years. I hate this. I'm not an OR nurse. I wish they were here. But don't worry because we have the one, two, three method and you remember it from class. So the surgeon comes down and announces it's time to open the chest. Uh, it's great. We've already got the cart there. First thing everyone's going to do is do one of the CALS rolls. We're going to bring the cart in and now let's do the, go through our one, two, three. One, we're going to put the gowns and gloves on the surgeon and his assistant. The rest of the people in the room only need to wear a hat and a mask. Uh, someone needs to remove the dressings before the prepping. The patient should be being bagged at 100% FiO2. One nurse should be giving emergency medications. The drip should be turned off unless the surgeon wants them on. Make sure that you know where the pacing box is and have cables hooked up to the wires and the pacing box. It might be a good idea to put the external defibrillator pads on before the sterile field is set up if they are not already on, preferably using the uh, external defibrillator pads with the long cord. One person needs to start recording on the clipboard on top of the chart. Once the gowns, gloves, and hats and masks are on the surgeon and his assistant, uh, drawer number two is opened surgeon will prep the chest with the prep kit, which has number one on it. The large drape then gets opened and handed off in a sterile fashion. The two sterile people unfold the drape, making the entire bed a sterile field. Now to step drawer three, step three. The scalpel and small instrument box get handed off first. Then throw everything, including the ink hour and sterile tubing, to help out with removal cl removing clots. Some surgeons will ask for normal saline warmed and poured into the sterile bowl. They will use the bulb syringe to squirt it in the chest. It helps break up clots, but must be warm to prevent defibrillating the heart. The uh, normal saline at the side of the cart needs to be put into the uh, heater for one minute in order to be warm enough to put on the heart. 
Once the retractor is in and the chest is open, you can take your time because the tamponade has been relieved. The heart is accessible for massage or defibrillation. The large instrument tray on top of the cart can now be handed off for any other instruments the surgeon may need at this point. The OR team is hopefully on the way to open an OR for the patient to be closed. Some programs close the chest in the ICU, but that is not a good practice at a low volume center where the team is not prepared to perform that procedure. One last recap. For the one, two, three method, surgeon says he wants to open up the chest. First thing you do is open up this drawer, hand over the sterile gloves and gowns to the surgeon and his assistant. Once they're gowned and gloved, go to number two, set up the sterile field, open up number one prep kit, number two the big drape which will be set over the entire bed to make a sterile field, throw the other items onto the sterile field if needed. Step three, open up the third drawer, hand over the scalpel, the box of essential instruments, while he's opening up the chest and getting the retractor in, everything else in the drawer should be open and thrown onto the bed, which was, is to the sterile field. In less than five minutes, the chest should be opened with a retractor in it, and now you can relieve tamponade, defibrillate, or do a direct cardiac massage, whatever's needed to save the patient's life. Once we get through that first crisis, we've got the big instrument tray, open it up, hand it to the surgeon, you can do whatever the situation calls for. If he needs a defibrillator, st pads for the internal, they're right here on top. Hand that over to him, too. That's it. The OR crew should be in to save you, and then you can uh, take the patient back to the OR for closing. You may be wondering what's in the rest of the cart. So I'll just show you quickly, even though uh, it's not the purpose of this film. So once the chest is open, you may have handed over the large instrument cart. Uh, the most important drawer is the top drawer, which you're going to be opening and looking for things anyway. This has the sutures, pledgets, and pop-offs in it. Uh, anything they ask for in their uh, OR language, we wrote on with other language. The second drawer has miscellaneous extra instruments in it in case something gets contaminated. You can take out uh, the staples with staple remover, and then there's a stapler as well. The third drawer is the most important thing in here is there's pace, extra pacing equipment. You should have your pacing equipment set up when uh, the patient comes into the OR. I mean, it comes back from the OR, but um, there's extras here. There's the pacing wires if they need more pacing wires in here. It's essentially the pacing drawer. The bottom drawer is just extra large bulk items that you may need during a code. You can just rifle through and get what you need. It's not essential for you to know what's there in order to take care of this patient. And that's it. That's the cart.